If I asked you if there was enough light inside this old barn to take a picture, you'd probably say no. But you know something? If there's any light, any light at all, no matter how dim, there's always enough light to get a good picture. Think about how an SLR camera like this one works. First, you choose an aperture. And then, depending on the kind of film you're using, there's always a correct shutter speed to get the proper exposure. The kind of film I'm using on a beautiful, bright, sunny day like today, the proper shutter speed would be a 500th of a second. But then, some clouds rolling. gets a little dimmer. You have to leave the shutter open just a little longer, 125th of a second. And then we go inside. There's some of that cloudy daylight coming in through the window. The shutter has to stay open just a little longer, a 30th of a second. Now in here, this is about as dim as things get, but as you can see, there is still some light, which means there's a correct amount of time to leave the shutter open to get the perfectly exposed picture. Normally, you take photographs using fractions of seconds, but in here, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Now, the film basically doesn't care whether you expose it for a very short period of time to a very bright light or for a very long time to a very dim light. Now, there is a hitch in long exposures. It's called reciprocity, but the important thing to remember is you can always get perfect pictures no matter how dim the light, including in here, and I'm going to show you how. Instead of a fraction of a second, we're talking full seconds and full minutes, and you can get some spectacular shots taking pictures like this. It's called time exposures. So how do you do it? Well, the first thing you've got to do is put your camera on a tripod or some very solid surface. And I see a beam over there I'm going to use. Any movement of the camera during a time exposure, it'll cause your picture to blur. Same thing applies for the subject. Unless you're trying for some very special effect of blurs and streaks, you've got to use a subject during a time exposure that doesn't move one little bit. Now, here's the big question. How long do you leave the shutter open for? I'm afraid I can't tell you that one. You just got to guess. And you've got to be willing to take the same picture five times. One more thing, you've got to have some patience. Now, if you're still with me, let's get into the guidelines. Up here in the hayloft, I'll start at F8 and 30 seconds. First thing I do is set the camera to B, the time exposure setting that allows the shutter to remain open as long as I want. And I'll set it to F8. Even though a faster f-stop of f2.8 or 3.5 would take the picture a little more quickly, you want to be sure and use f8 or f11 for good depth of field to make sure everything out here is in focus. And also brought along a cable release that I'll hook up to the camera so that when I press the button, the camera won't move one little bit. Now, f8 at 30 seconds seems to be a good place to start. Let's frame up our shot. Even though there's some sunlight there in the middle, what we're mainly going for are all the beams and the rafters, and they're very dimly lit. That's why we're taking a time exposure. All right, we get away from the camera, grab a stopwatch so we can time our time exposure, and go for it. While we're waiting here, let me make a confession. I don't know if this time exposure is going to be any good or not. There are some very expensive light meters that'll tell you if your time exposure is going to be all right, and there are some cameras that will automatically do it for you, but right now what we're doing is called bracketing. Bracketing is just a fancy way of saying you don't know what the proper exposure is. So you take a lot of shots of the same scene at different exposures, and you hope one gives you a good picture. Hey, folks, film is still a bargain. I'm here, I'm set up, so I take five shots to get one good one. That's how the pros work, you know. Now, here's how you bracket. We've just taken a shot at 30 seconds, so the next shot we go one stop away, doubling it to one minute. Then after that, we double that to two minutes. And then we go the other way from our original shot. We took it at 30 seconds, one stop down to 15 seconds. Have that, that's seven and a half seconds. So there you have it, five shots, and out of that, hopefully, we'll get one good one. Well, I think I got it here, but you never know. I suppose we were experimenting a little bit with time exposures, and we won't really find out what we got till we got our pictures back. Well, the results are in, and uh, it doesn't look too terrifically fantastic. This is the seven second shot. You really can't tell where you are. And let's see, we've got the 15 second one, a little more detail, but I'm afraid the lighting's still not very good. Let me go up to my initial guess, 30 seconds. Uh, a little bit better, but that minute one getting a lot closer. And oh, look at that two minute shot. Plenty of detail, nicely lit. You can't even begin to tell how dark it was in that barn. Oh, that's real nice. 
You know, most SLR cameras can do time exposures. If you've never given it a shot, the next time you're in a low-light situation, you might try one. Or, more appropriately, you might give it five shots.